you know, I, of, I often say, you know, I've faked brave for so long, mm. but it is, you have to be a brave person as a three-year-old, mm. as a 40-year-old. Mm -hmm. I had to be brave to say to Music Row, you know, like, I'm going to be a teacher now. Mm -hmm. It's It takes bravery, I think, sometimes to say, I don't agree with you and this is why. Right. But I'm going to listen to you. I think it's good. Yeah. I think you have to be brave to listen. Mm -hmm. And just that idea of my brave might be loud and, you know, I'm a lot to take in and I'm I'm loud and I'm a lot, you know. But somebody else's brave might be just calm. And, you know, you have any group of kids you have, 25-year-olds, every personality is in that group. Mm -hmm. And I watch mm -hmm. them for the first two weeks and I'm like, okay, that's this, this is... Mm -hmm. This outgoing, extrovert, introvert needs, you know, and I figured all out and then I mixed them up mm -hmm. because I want them to celebrate not only everybody else, mm -hmm. which I think is what we focus on so much, but also celebrate who you are. Yeah. Hey, I'm Lauren Lucas. I'm obsessed with learning and I live for true authentic connection. I'm a wife, a working mom, professional singer-songwriter, and an instructor of songwriting at my alma mater, Belmont University. You could say that life's a little full. I'm always looking for a way to sneak in some me time with great friends, good food, and meaningful conversation. Here we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the hard, and the wonderful. My guests include well-known recording artists, hit songwriters, film directors, wellness coaches, and creative entrepreneurs. Plus, we throw in a delicious beverage, an easy weekend recipe. Think of it like happy hour, but better. I'm Lauren Lucas. This is The Happiest Hour. It's the happiest hour when I'm with you. It's the happiest hour. Let's raise our glasses to doing this crazy life together. Keeping it real can't get much better As long as I'm with you It's the happiest hour oh. Hi, welcome back to the happiest hour. My guest this week is Casey Bowles Scott. She is a go-to resource for teachers and parents alike of kindergarten teachers. Uh, she is a professional singer, songwriter, and session singer. She was, in fact, the first person to ever sing the Carrie Underwood hit before he cheats. Um, and she has her own hit singles writing children's music and just released her first children's book. So she is funny and energetic and just such a sweet spirit. I know you're going to be inspired by her story because she has got quite a story to tell. Going from professional musician er, to kindergarten teacher and then bringing them together again. So I cannot wait for you to meet Casey. Let's dive right in. Cheers! Cheers! Welcome to the happiest hour. Thank you for having me. Thanks um, for being my guest. This is my happiest hour today. Yay! Yes, it is. Absolutely. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And this, your, tell me your friend's name who made, who Jeff. suggested this. Jeff, Jeff Kirkland. Mm, Jeff, great job. Yes, thank you. He knows what I would like. I will say, like, I've enjoyed all the recipes that my guests have brought, but mm -hmm. this one might be my favorite <gasps> cocktail so far. What? And that rosemary, like you can smell it. It's, it's while nice. you're drinking it, oh, yeah, it's, it's nice. really good. It's very crisp, yeah. light yeah. and refreshing. He did a great. He knows I'll me. I'll make that all fall. He knows me better than I know myself. There you go. Honestly. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are a professional and have been for years. I mean, we've known each other for years and years. Mm -hmm. Professional singer, songwriter, demo singer, touring artist. I mean, like best of the best in Nashville, pro. Hey, thanks. And you still that, do, you I still do. do some of that. Mm -hmm. And then you went, er, I'm going to get my master's and become a kindergarten, a kindergarten teacher. Yeah. Um, which is like one of the widest pivots maybe <laughs> <laughs> that any of my friends have taken. Yes. Um, so that's really where I want to kind of dive in is what, how, why, <laughs> what, like really what was the catalyst for such a uh, kind of harsh pivot? Harsh is the exact well, word. No, it's right. right. It was. Harsh makes it sound bad. It's not bad at all, but it's just so like left field kind of. It was. It was. I think it's, it's, there's a lot of things that went into play, but if I were to kind of skip forward through, yes, singing, singing, songwriting, publishing, all that stuff that mm -hmm. we did together. And then, um, I was turning 40, found myself single again, again. <laughs> 
Boy, Single boy. again. 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was just like, I don't know. I, I probably was having a pity party. I felt, I felt lost, mm -hmm. and I think I felt um, like I was, I was supposed to do something different. I hadn't really, you know, this hadn't gone the way I wanted to, or this hadn't gone the way I wanted to, and I had no kids of my own. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I loved being a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, I was a good kid. I'm not. I was a good kid. That's questionable. But like, I was really You're good at it. it. I was really good at it. <laughs> yeah. Like, my mom even says that when I was in first grade, they asked what you wanted to be when you grow up, and I said, without a doubt, a teenager. I'm gonna be a really good teenager because <laughs> I'm really good at this. But I loved being a kid, and I um, I'm a great aunt. It's like one of mm -hmm. my favorite jobs in the world. And I've known that about you. I mean, you have always valued um, that relationship completely. I'm, mm -hmm. My family's very close. Um, I lost my dad when I was in college, and I have a, a brother ten years younger and a sister that's older. And my sister started having babies, and I, I don't. I think it was initially the reason for all of us to have something happy mm -hmm. when she had her first child, and. I mean, I took that job very seriously. Yeah. Like, don't mess with my aunting. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just keep. I'm a super aunt now, I'm, mm -hmm. but I'm like a great aunt, and I'm sure that that and not like <laughs> again. I'm not like not great like at it, but, but I'm technically yes, a great aunt. A great aunt. Yes. And um, anyway, I've just always loved being around those kids, and I think I, I didn't. I never felt that need to be a mom. Although I did, mm -hmm. that's weird and very bipolar sounding, but I think I just knew that I wanted to be around kids. I loved a certain age of kids and I just thought that that was just being an aunt. I, I mean, I was mm -hmm. a, a nanny before I got my first publishing deal, mm -hmm. um, full-time nanny, and it always worked with camps and things like that. And so turning 40, found myself at crossroads out of my fourth publishing deal, and mm -hmm. it was just kind of like... You will, you will know this. Did you sit in rooms with writers who had been at it longer than you and you were writing something and just negative, negative, negative mm. coming at you about the business, about the artist, about radio, about whatever it was. Mm. And I remember being a young writer or young to town and hating that feeling. And I'm a positive person at the core mm -hmm. and I, I said to myself over and over if I am that voice in the room then it's time for me to take a step back mm -hmm. and I just don't think that's that's a healthy place to go and right. so I started hearing myself mm -hmm. kind of um, maybe not even to the person in the room but just you know mouthing off to friends or whatever you know like oh this business this but mm -hmm. and turning 40 getting out of that publishing deal Hearing my voice, I was like, you know what? I need a pivot. Yeah. I don't like that word anymore, pivot, but I got, I mean, and I did an about face. And mm -hmm. um, I honestly, we were talking, you know, you read my, my come to Jesus moment, mm -hmm. and I literally driving around Nashville crying, what am I going to do? What do you want from me? And found myself in a parking lot. And fast forward, that parking lot was the education building at Lipscomb University. And fast forward, I was kind of, I literally went in to use the restroom and came out, um, enrolled in one class. <laughs> it was like <laughs> the most, um, productive restroom break I've ever had, wow. you know, and, you know, kind of thought to myself, I'll take one class, get this out of my system and figure out what, you know, what's my next step. In what was that class? Um, it was something to do with my, what I got my master's in. I liked glass, um, which was uh, just K through six instructional practice in elementary. Okay. So it was something to do with, and I think it. I that's what your master's is in. Yes. All of, that's the whole. It's. I think that's I'm what it's called. It right. Instructional yeah. practice K through six. Oh great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I had to do that. I had a, a BA in music, which was very beneficial, not at all. <laughs> right. And um, but it, is, and we'll it wasn't that. at Belmont or MTSU. This was you yeah. know back in the day. Yeah. Um, I learned how to sing opera, mm -hmm. not well. Yeah. Um, we all had to do that if we yes. were in music school and college. Yes. I was so bad at it. I got C's in voice. C's. And I was, I kept doing it. Um, I, I made my voice teacher in college, my classical teacher, really mad because I skipped something that 
I didn't realize it wasn't optional. Oh, <laughs> was, well, <laughs> it was not optional. Yes. And I really heard about it. And anyway, that's like my big memory from my classical yeah. um, teacher. Anyway. I just remember feeling like I was just putting on a fake show the whole time. I yeah. Going, like, yeah, I just, yeah. Like I put on like a Chevy Chase voice <laughs> to get through it. And then like, that was great. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, so one class went into it every, it took me two years to get it. And every time I would talk to my mom, my mom was a K through five music teacher oh. for years and years and years. And then she went to the classroom and taught third and fourth. She actually taught her whole career. And my sister actually went to school to be a home ec teacher. And wow. I, because I was who I was, I was like, I'm not doing any of that. Right, you know, right, right. I'm never going to be a teacher. And I, I don't know what I thought I was going to do, but... I, I just didn't want to be a teacher. And then, of course, what I did, I was, I called my mom. I remember that call. She goes, finally. And I was like, what? She goes, this is the first same thing you've ever done. I'm like, what? So, That's yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I kind of was, she always says that I'm my father's child. So she's put up with a lot. That's really years. funny. And now, yeah. I mean, you have been voted educator of the year, teacher of the year. Yeah. And educator of the week or something, something. on the news yeah. channel. Yeah. Two. Two. News channel to the news. But and then was, teacher of the year for your school. Is that right? Yes. I was teacher of the year, which totally floored me. I kept thinking like, you have this totally What do you wrong. have? What are the, what's the criteria to meet to be teacher of the year? I'm not, I'm sure you're deserving no, that. No, I'm just kidding. You're very what, wise to question. What is the criteria for that? I don't know. And who, who, you're very wise to question. I'm just curious. Um, so I think, well, I, I was first um, teacher of the year at my own school, and so that's just, you have to have, like, you have to spend most of your time with the kid, you know, in, in instruction with kids one-on-one, mm -hmm. and you have to talk so many years, I think, I think, mm -hmm. I think. Anyway, you your staff votes, so it's a peer vote. Okay. So okay. that was, wow, that's really, that was really special sure. to me. And, um, oh, and it was in awesome. 2020 mm. when... Virtual learning. Yes. Wow. And it was so funny because I remember... Um, well, no, that was the other. I, I, teachers of the year, every teacher of the year in Nashville, then go into some pool, oh, and cool. then they. Get, I think it's like district teacher of the year, or whatever. So mm -hmm. I was a, a finalist in the um, MMPS district teacher of the mm -hmm. year, and so that one was a pretty funny deal because I was in my classroom totally alone on my Zoom, mm -hmm. and I had the twenty boxes of five year olds and their families, if you recall. You know, yeah. try to block that out. Oh, that was. Glorious in its own way. Sure, sure. But um, my principal came in with the assistant principal at the time, and I remember <laughs> giving her the stink eye going, like, don't you see I'm in class right now? <laughs> and she kind of laughed, and I was like, no. And, like, I was like, y'all just second. it. No, I'm doing this, you know. And she started laughing and had her own laptop, and it was Dr. Battle. <laughs> he's in charge of yes. MMPS and all, all of her staff, and they were laughing. And I was like, what is happening? So my kids got to be there, and Aww, that was a big deal. That's cool. But that's then, very cool. yeah, somebody, I guess, anonymously wrote a parent anonymously wrote into News Channel Two, and I was picked for Educator of the Week, Aww. which was hilarious because, again, when my principal called me to do that, I was like, "What? What did I do?" I mean, my, my <laughs> initial instinct is, "Oh my gosh, what did I do? Yeah. I did something," and she let me, yeah, you know, stew in that for a while. But that's funny. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, and you. You also, so I follow you and love to see you flourishing in this way. You are also, in my view at least, a, really like a top resource online and through your newsletters that you send out for both teachers and parents of kindergarten age children. Oh, thank you. I mean, Thanks you're you're constantly giving free resources through your newsletter or you're giving tips and tricks. I don't know what desk pets are because my child <laughs> is not old enough yet. You will. But Hopefully you I will. have no idea what that is, but you are all about the desk pets and all about like how to prep for kindergarten and what you wish what kindergarten teachers wish parents knew before they yes. like, I mean, you're just kind of, I'm seeing you as kind of this top resource for that oh, area. And you are going to be approaching that soon. Yeah. Like so two, two years. years, years or but so, it's three good. Years. I think, you know, not being a parent myself, I know, and that, that actually, um, has come into play a lot because in my first, I, you know, it's one of those things, my very first year teaching, you know, I did the two years and then my first teaching job, I stood up in front of those parents, um, meet the teacher night. Mm -hmm. And I felt like such 
an imposter. I felt like such a fraud. And I remember standing there and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have my guitar. Oh my gosh, I don't have my microphone. Oh my gosh, I don't. And I picked up a microphone. I have tons of microphones in my classroom. Go figure. But it was like a glitter microphone, like a little fur thing. And I picked it up and I was like, okay, this is the only way I can address you and feel confident. And I said, I need you all to know, you know, you know, I'm the new teacher here. Which is weird because I'm older than most of you. I was. <laughs> and, you know, I said, um, I, I, I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm going to give it everything I have. But I don't feel, I don't know what I'm doing yet. And I want you to know, if you want to walk out right now and get your kid moved, I don't blame you. And they all, thankfully, they all laughed. And I said, no, like, I, I'm in this with you. I, I want you to teach me. I want to teach you. Like, I, we are going to figure this out together. And if you trust me, which... Good luck. You know, yeah, like yeah. it's going to be a journey, but I, I, I am a singer songwriter. I am a, I am best in closed studios with headphones on and a baseball cap. <laughs> you know, like that is my happy place. And mm. I said, I'm going to, I, I promise you this. I will love your kids as if they are my own. Mm. I do know that. And they all stuck with me. I had mm. nobody leave in that year. I'm so thankful for those parents. And actually this is, I get chills thinking about it. One little boy, and uh, he had a, a list. His, his name is Harrison, but it's Harrison. <laughs> yeah. His name was Harrison Farth. <laughs> and he, um, I would, went by Miss Foles still. I wasn't married. And he said uh, he would go, Miss Foles. <laughs> you know, and I just, every day. It, it was so just precious. Uh -huh. Red hair. Uh -huh. And um, we, I loved him so much. He got to do kindergarten twice. We oh, always nice. Just, <laughs> but he, he taught me how to teach. Hmm. He and, th and that group of kids taught me how to teach. And at my wedding, three years later, <clears throat> he gave the toast at our wedding. Aww. And one of my favorite pictures. Did he give a toast or a toast? And he, well, at the time, it was a toast. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> he gave a toast. It's good. And, at the, and of course, my married name is Scott. And so he, it was like, it was JW and Miss Bolt, Miss Scott. You know, he's like, a girl's got to grow up sometimes. <laughs> So precious. Yeah, he we, he just found me on Instagram, and Aww. I'm like, oh my god. But so so what? I mean, what would you say? Kind of looking back over the last <clears throat> however long that's been now, ten years, five mm -hmm. years since you got your master's and then moved into education, and we're still going to get to like you have now melded these two things that you do so well into your own niche, which I'm so fascinated by yeah. and inspired me by. Me too. I'm <laughs> fascinated by it too. <laughs> but I'm just curious, like when you kind of think about it, what? has this about face, I'll use your phrase, yeah. about face taught you, especially oh in, in a middle aged life, a middle mm -hmm. life, um, change. That's a great question. I feel like, hmm, I feel like with, when you get out of your own way, I think I had to get out of my own way, honestly, mm -hmm. that it taught me to get out of my own way. And I was in my way a lot. Mm. And, um, those kids, you know, my mom used to tell me this, you know, you know, your mom's wisdom is like lost on you and yeah. until you need it. And I have found myself talking to these five year olds and like, I'm, I hear my mom and I'm like, Mar. but <laughs> I even, you know, Hey, don't come into the store. I don't, you didn't get the cereal you wanted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, mm -hmm. that door, you know, you come over the store where it's, it's a, it's a fresh start. And mm -hmm. I think I found it's the same thing is I don't want to be the negative voice in a writer's room. And then I am, I need a reset. Mm -hmm. I would even find, Oh, I'm tired. It's oh it's eight o'clock. Oh, teaching the rare moments that you are in there with just those children are like, I would stand up if I could do a toe touch and do a touch. Like they are my reason now. They are my why Th those five years, five years is a sweet spot. Mm. I love like five year olds. Is five that year olds. Mm. They are they are so open, mm. joyous, creative. Um, they're they're just the perfect age mm. to me, you know. Mm -hmm. And and you know, of course, a high school or middle school teacher would be like, "What? You can't be triggered," and I feel that way about them. But yeah. I, I, it's just taught me to remember to be kind to myself. And, uh, I, I tell them what I need to be telling myself. Mm. They mm. didn't, they didn't that. learn how to write that word. And then it's, mm, or, you know, it's, you know, it's pout mode. And I'm like, Oh, no, 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 no. Um, 
a third grade teacher who I love named, he just retired, Mr. Todd. He gives the best hugs. And third grade math, one of my nightmares is, I don't know how <laughs> he did it. He taught all of us. He said it at a staff meeting once and I just took it and made it my own too. Um, instead of, you know, doing something wrong, he's, he always says, thank you for the learning opportunity. So if you do, you know, make a mistake in math, mm -hmm. the whole class, will shout out, thank you for the learning opportunity. Oh, and it that. makes the environment so open to to fail. Mm -hmm. And that's beautiful is to fail. And I, I spent so many years beating myself up for every failure. And mm -hmm. there were, there are many, you know? <laughs> I mean, like, even if it's, you know, oh, shoot, I didn't pay that bill on time. Or, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't say that. So many, I was so hard, I became so hard on myself, and I wasn't that way when I was a child. I wasn't. I was, mm -hmm. all the way through high school, I was like, Pollyanna, woo, you can do mm -hmm. it, you know, and I, I turned against myself, and um, a lot of that I know, I like my, my 20s and 30s, I know I was really, now I know, mm -hmm. good therapy later. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I was, I did not deal with my dad's dying well, and I, mm -hmm. I think I just... I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I just turned against myself. So all that to say, I, I, I want them to fail and everybody in that classroom runs and picks them up. Whether mm -hmm. it's, um, I stood up and, you know, I, I gave the wrong answer or I raised my hand and stuff. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's just growing that culture of love and acceptance and positivity and dreaming and creating and failing and I, if I could just lock my door and have me and my 25-year-olds all day, mm. dream. <laughs> dream. Yeah. And it's the other stuff being a teacher that, that is really hard. You know, mm. you can't, oh, it's like, oh, I'm a songwriter, songwriter bill again. You know, it's like the same, it's horrible pay. And, mm. but it's one of those things where it's like, if, if y'all would just get out of our way and let the teachers who love to teach be, be those kids, it's the most beautiful thing. So. Mm. The more I hear myself saying, it's okay, or no, you, no, go, go back out. I'm going to walk out with you, and we're going to walk in this door together mm -hmm. with a new attitude. Mm -hmm. I'm usually saying it to myself. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, I call them family meetings, and sometimes <laughs> if I'm even frustrated about, oh, I've got to get this testing done or whatever, I'll say family meeting, and they love it, and they're like, yes, because they know I'm getting ready to confess something, you know, most of the time. And so we'll sit in our little circle, and I'm like, y'all. And I'm like, I gotta tell you something. Miss Scott just, I just had a, you know, and I'll go through something and they're like, Miss Scott, <gasps> you know. <laughs> and so I'll just kind of tell myself. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Y'all, I'm, I'm sorry. I am. And they'll always say, you're old. I'm like, I know. <laughs> and, you know, so they'll just pick me back up and give me a reset. And, yeah. and honestly, that's, I don't even know if I answered your question. But that, no, you that did. I think, really, I mean, you always, they say, whoever they are, that oftentimes to learn things best, if you can teach, if you can teach it, then you learn it better yeah. that way. And I think when it comes to positive self-talk and just getting out of our own way and everything you were just talking about, like, I think it's, I think it's beautiful and insightful that you can recognize that, yeah. that you are not just talking to them, but that you're talking to yourself. Oh, all the time. Um, and that's just, that's very powerful. Now, some days I don't. So, and and well, I have a best friend who also teaches down the, down the row. What our, a lot of our parents call, call us Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, is, and I'm so thankful for her. She's my work wife. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I'll stay in that place, and, you know, we'll find ourselves on the recess bench, and some days, some days it's her turn, some days it's mine. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I'll, like, <laughs> vent something out, and, you know, and then I hear myself give myself the answer, you know, mm -hmm. and just keeping, finding that friend to keep accountable, and, uh, you know, I think teaching them it's so interesting to me her kids my kids and all the kids they all say well miss you know miss martin's your best friend or what would you and miss martin do you and miss martin shouldn't sit together at a faculty <laughs> meeting you know and it's the things that i'm telling them about life mm -hmm. that they can then mirror back to me and it's just honestly i am my best self with them mm. Because they hold me accountable. Because yeah. I hold them accountable. Yeah. And you can see here <laughs> by my... Kids do keep you honest. Oh, they do. <laughs> they, and they are more honest than you would like them to be. Yes, yes. Times. For yes. sure. For sure. Okay, so you have found this beautiful spot of mixing your creativity with music and writing 
with your teaching and education experience. Mm -hmm. And so you have Casey, well, is it Casey Bowles kids? Casey Casey, Bowles kids. It is, I was going to say. So Scott is your married name, but Casey Bowles kids. Yes. And um, you have been writing and recording and releasing kids music. Mm -hmm. You were, and help me out with the, with the full thing. Number one on Sirius XM kids Kids play live kids. Yes. It's it's channel 78. Channel 78. Okay. So you've had Mm -hmm. hit singles on Mm -hmm. the children's channel on Sirius XM. Yes. And I did not know it existed until this. I think it's, it's been one of the most fun, unexpected gifts in Mm -hmm. my life, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, um, I mean, how, how did you carve out that niche of, of combining these two loves, your music and your education, and now a book on the horizon as well? Yes. So, um, so, well, yeah. I, I'm going to blame or thank my friend Nathan Meckel for that. Um, you know how you and I have known each other for years and years and years, but when have we sat in a room recently and got to talk? So, right. you know, those connections, you form them, and then sometimes they come full circle. And when I first started teaching my very, you know, my first year when I tried to tell everybody to take your children away from me, they're not safe. (laughs) They, um, they, I met, you know, I still sing and still do things. Mm -hmm. I think I was singing back up, ended up finding myself next to a guitar player, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Hey, you need to meet my dad. Why do I need to meet your dad? Oh, my dad does a lot of stuff with kids publishing. Kevin, like, okay. Met his dad, Mark Meckel, just a little man you want to like put in your pocket and carry around <laughs> and like tell me it's going to be a good day. Okay. He's, he's a mate, just the sweetest man and listened to me just dream about things. And mm-hmm. I had written a song um, called Color Say that I, mm-hmm. with my friend and honestly the reason I'm alive, Candy Cameron, mm-hmm. she's the one that helped me at my lowest mm-hmm. and I... Somehow that ended up, I'd written a children's program, but put it in the back of my brain years before mm-hmm. I had become, you know, went back to school. So, um, Mark Meckel, I'd done a couple things for Nathan and Nathan had his own kids band called the Happy Racers. Okay. And Mark gave me a CD when there was CD, I right, had a CD right. player in my classroom <laughs> and gave me a CD and I loved it. Mm-hmm. It was, it was like, you know what? Nathan's got the coolest voice. And um, Lane and Mark, the members of that band, it's like music you want to listen to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yet my kids loved it too. And I was like, gosh, that is so great. That's it. That's all I thought. Yeah. Years later. um, So I taught three years at that school and three. So I've I've been teaching now six years. I had been teaching and it was right before 2020. Mm -hmm. And Nathan called me. And said, Casey, hey, I've got this um, thought. And I was like, great, share it. You know, what are you thinking? And he launched into one of the longest monologues about, (laughs) just give it a thought. I had this thought. I've got this, you know, boutique record label and um, Happy Racers are on it. And, you know, I'm just, I've been watching you with your kids. You seem to love kids. You're a great singer. But, you know, do you do that? I'm like, well, you know, I laid it down. I, you know, I do do it for hire, but yeah, I laid that part down. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, why would you think about picking it up? And just, and as he kept talking, kept monologuing. And I sat there. I remember I pulled up in our driveway and I, I was sitting there in my car off. And I, I just started laughing. I listened to the rest of the time, but I was laughing. And I'm like, this is the biggest no brainer that I have <laughs> never thought about ever. <laughs> And I just, he went on and on and on and on, and he stopped, and he goes, just give it a thought. And I go, yes, yes. And then sign me up. And he goes, wait, do you really? I was like, yes, yes. So then you had, so you didn't, did he already think you had a catalog of children's songs nope. written, or did you go into the project fresh? Nope. He just said, you have the front row seat. You have a front row seat to kids, what they love, mm-hmm. what they are listening to, what they say every day. Mm-hmm. Um and I came in, you know, teacher heart. I, I was like, and their struggles and what we need to lift them up with. Yeah. And, you know, like we need to give them confidence and hope. And he's like, right. <laughs> Back it up a notch <laughs> and wrap it into fun things that they want to hear. And I was like, yes. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's just, we just started writing. And um, honestly, I was, I was driving the first song. And, and on, here's the thing. At that point in my life. I told my husband, JW, 
I said, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. And he said, well, what are you, are you going to be disappointed if it doesn't work out? And I said, I'm going to be disappointed if I don't try it. Mm -hmm. And I feel, and also, what does working out even mean? I don't know. I don't even know what that means today in the music know. business. I, I mean, there's, there's so, so many ways to do it and so many ears to get to. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Side note. And, and I think at the, I think mm -hmm. I was at that place at that point. I'm like, well, I don't, I don't need to do it. I'm not going to do anything I can do for money. I'm not going to be anything I want to be for money. At this, mm -hmm. like, I, I have a job. You have a job. Thank the Lord. We are steady. This is going to be truly for fun. Mm -hmm. And if somebody likes it, somebody likes it, mm -hmm. you know? And I was driving to work out in this ex cheerleader here. <laughs> and I heard this chant in my brain and I was like, that is annoying. And what in the world? And I finally put it on my little voice memo mm -hmm. and it was like, dear Debbie, dear, dear Debbie. And it was like a drum like beat and I could not get out of my head. And I went to Nathan and I'm like, this is so chanty. Yeah. And he's like, well, put a little bit of a, you know, of a melody to it. And we did that song flew out of us and was so joyful mm -hmm. and honestly if I had not written if I haven't or didn't write another song past that that would have been the marrying of my whole existence mm -hmm. I got to think like I did when I was five mm -hmm. I had no idea is this country is it a goose like what is this mm -hmm. I have no idea mm -hmm. so like all of the things that we listened Branding to came out the yes of box of exactly. artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. can't have steel on that right right <laughs> like all of it was just it just kind of I don't know. It just was the right place, the right time. And, mm -hmm. and then he was like, well, I'm going to release it. And I don't play everything. And, and I'm like, I didn't even know there was a channel for that. Like yeah. I didn't, I'm great. You know? Yeah. And so he's like, we'll just drop it, but don't get your hopes up. You know, that kind of thing. And I was like, you got it. He called and said, um, I think they're going to, I think they're going to play it. And I was like, really? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And it was cool. But I'm like, well, I'm going to have to get, you know, like I need to make sure I have it on the channel. Yeah. And I actually, believe it or not, I, just like I said, the kids started really holding me accountable to who I am and who I want to be as an authentic, mm -hmm. you know, my authentic self. I started, I've really started listening to my gut mm -hmm. and oh my gosh, I've been, I had been just shutting that voice out mm -hmm. for decades mm -hmm. until that wonderful productive restaurant, restaurant visit. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I was driving back from my hometown in Kentucky, long stretch of highway listening to Kids Bop Play, yeah, yeah, kids play, play and, what is it called? Uh, kids Place Live. Okay, is, is Kids Bop like a competitor for that station? They're Sorry. Not a competitor, but that is like, a that different. is like kids singing popular music. It's like oh, a, oh, and then that. Right, now this is original music. Yes. Yes, got yes. it. Okay. I mean, they'll play covers and things. But, yeah. Um, and there's this artist named Saul Paul, and <laughs> his, I, I didn't know who he was yet. I mean, I was just getting to learn the names of the kids artists, and he had this song, and oh my gosh, it was playing, and it was like, I'm going to get it wrong now. It was like, I don't know what I've been told, but da 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 And then he kind of does this rap of like, just like this talking thing, and it just made me so happy. <laughs> and so I felt, I don't know, and I picked up my phone, which you should not do, as you know, and I started recording that station. I had no idea why I did it. And so there's this video of like kids play slime. Mm -hmm. And as right, I don't know why I did it. We have a new song coming out for this artist oh in case it dare to be me. And I, of course the video, I'm like, ah, 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 you know, <laughs> almost wrecking. And it was the first time I've ever heard a song about on the radio. Yes. Wow. And so I cool. pulled over and just like bawled my eyes out. I cannot believe I bawled my eyes out for so many reasons. Not because like, yay, I have a song. It was like, thank you, uh, universe, me, every, all of the journeys, all, you know, the shoots and ladders of your life. Yep, yep. It all just sort of went, okay, God, you know, like, I, I, I hear you. Mm -hmm. This is not ever what I had dreamed would happen when I was. 20, mm -hmm. 25, 30, 35, going, if I could just have my name, mm -hmm. I laid it all down. Sometimes I feel like if you just lay it all down and like in my wildest dreams, I didn't think I would ever win that. Isn't it so funny how, I mean, only all of those years leading up and your experience in life could have led to that point. Yep. And also 
when it's right and aligned, it could not be easier. Right. It, because you're not controlling it. Not <laughs> trying. Trying right, to control that's right. or forcing and it. And then it just, just things happens. happen. And, and then it feels like a dream. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels mm -hmm. like a dream. And now, you know, it's funny, you know. <laughs> Nashville, you know, songwriters, friends of mine, they're like, well, you know, but how much money? And I'm like, I don't know yet. Yeah. And I think before I re that's, that is what we got trained to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I got trained to do, it was write this because of this, write this for this, this person is doing it. And it was so much pressure and the authenticity. And I'm not saying that always happened. Right. And right. I had so many great memories and I mean, such beautiful friendships have come out of all my time on music Row and all that. But, but I started losing myself and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I knew who I was going in. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't know that I knew who I was. Yeah. You know, I really, Same. we didn't have, and that's what most of my therapy sessions were yeah. about for 10 years. <laughs> I don't think I knew. I think I had to, I think I force fed myself who I was mm -hmm. after college and, um, when, you know, losing my dad, I think, and, and we didn't have the internet. We didn't have anything like my biggest dream was to wear a rip away sequence on the opera stage. <laughs> right, right, right. Under the USA, uh -huh. rest in peace, you yeah, know, yeah. that was it. And I got, I auditioned in Little Rock, Arkansas, which is close to where I went to college three times, like to the cattle call, you know, mm -hmm. no, thank you. Probably because you're not auditioned with. <laughs> What? Did the it? Hill? No. No, I probably would have gotten it. did. I remember standing up and like putting on my little accompaniment tape and it was like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, Hell should I? Hell should I? Dad, thank you. Okay. Uh, you know, the next year. Sing your praise to the Lord. Oh, next. Okay, thank you. I wanted to be the next Amy Grant. Like, yes. You know, and Amy never stopped being Amy. So, sure. I, you know. Right, so that role was yeah, already taken. Yeah, yeah. And, so but I thought I wanted to be a Christian. I wanted to be a Christian artist. Yeah, bad. And then you know, at the time, they didn't really smile upon divorced people wanting to be oh. Christian music, <laughs> which I did very quickly um, right after college. And so, but I did get to sing at Opryland. But I did get there. To you sing go. It. And you got? Did you get to rip away? Totally a ripped it away. Yeah, girl. Ripped it away. Yeah. Once I ripped it away, there was like a backless outfit. That I forgot to take my bra off, and so I came on stage like oh, no. dun, dun, bra strap, walked right back on stage. Dun, dun. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't I wasn't the best, but I got to rip it away. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so yeah. okay, so you have a handful of singles that you have written and recorded for children, children's music. Yes, you've been number one on Sirius XM. Yes, you have a book. <gasps> That's my baby you're holding. So the companion piece is the single that's already been released, Dare yeah. to Be Me, yeah. your first single. Mm -hmm. And then a book by the same name. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give, we're going to do a drawing giveaway for this, right? So at the time of filming, mm -hmm. you know, if you're watching this after the fact, then you might miss the opportunity. But if you're watching it now, yeah. um, we're going to do a drawing of this. And so we'll have information on that. Um, so can you give us a little background on what we can expect in the book? Yes without giving too much away. And yes. then I want to know, like, without trying to micromanage and control too much, because <laughs> letting go seems to be so working for you. What do you have future goals? And, and I mean, I'm sure you do, you're a person, but like, what's next? What do you hope is next? Or would you know what's Gosh. next? But first, tell us a little bit about the book. Okay, sorry, I should have no, asked just okay. one question at a time. That's okay. Our brains work the same. I it's know, okay. I, I don't even think you asked me about <laughs> our feeling or Amy Grant. And I decided to tell you about it. Um, so yeah, this is the song that sort of introduced me to whatever. And it's funny because for the longest time, you know, like my kid, like my kindergarten kids and my parents, I was a little afraid um, that they might not want a kinder, their teacher to also be in the music. Like, you know, mm. of course, I'm in East Nashville. And right, right. so I, you know, I totally misread More that. Palatable, yeah. But I didn't tell my kids. And when we did the video uh, for that song, it was the first time, and I, it was 2020, it was COVID, and I had a handful of my kids from the previous year, but I didn't tell any of my kindergartners. And um, I, I think I was, I was nervous, you know, yeah. and it was released in 2020, and I feel like it was the perfect, like we've talked about, the 
perfect storm of everything. Mm -hmm. And the message, I mean, the song was written from my perspective, clearly. The, like, the verses are flat out me and my childhood, right? Mm -hmm. um, the comparison mm -hmm. game. The, the mm -hmm. comparison trap that's that we all fall into. Still, yes. Still. And, you know, I see it in five-year-olds. Mm -hmm. I see it in six. It, it's, I see it already with my three-year-old and, and even saw it six months ago where it's like so-and-so gets a cheese stick in their lunchbox. Can I have a cheese stick? Yeah. And it's like maybe Why do you he, want a cheese stick. Yeah, maybe he just really likes cheese sticks. Right. But, I mean, I don't think they share food at school. So, anyway, it's yeah. like, well, I see them having it. Yes. <laughs> to it's like totally. two and a half. And it happens. <sighs> and on the, on the playground, that is honestly, uh, I just had a student teacher and we laughed because... I, I call people to the back. I judge Judy a lot. I mean, just a little, like a little gap, a little pencil gavel. <laughs> but a lot of times it's an argument over two little girls. They're, they keep, they keep drawing the same picture as me or they keep doing this. And I'm like, why are you doing that? I don't know. Well, why don't you try your own picture? Uh -huh. I don't know. And so then I'll separate and then just to kind of encourage, like you are your own person. Mm -hmm. And I think it's called, you know, like, that's one of my big messages that I want for the kids, but also for parents and for fellow kindergarten teachers. And teachers right now, we're all going through it. How do, there's, how do we build healthy, empathetic, loving mm -hmm. people? Mm -hmm. And, you know, my passion is for them to love learning, but also just to be a good human, or you know? And, and, um, Part of that is being exactly who you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And my two best friends in high school, we just went on our 50th birthday trip. Oh, yeah. One's blonde, <laughs> one's brunette, and I was the redhead. I can't <laughs> tell you how many. I put sun in, in my hair to be blonde. Um, oh, yeah. Let me do this to be I mm -hmm. felt so different, even though. But I think everybody feels that. I think every single mm -hmm. child is looking around. And so the, the message of Dare to Be Me is clearly dare to be me, but I don't know. We, we'd written so many songs and we had so many social emotional messages and all this kind of stuff. And I showed up at Nathan's probably last hmm, summer. I don't even know. Time has lost mm -hmm. me now. A while ago now. And I worked in and he, I said, I know what we're going to write today. And he said, okay, what is it? And I said, dare to be me. It's already been done, Casey. We did that. I'm like, nope, we're going to write dare to be me. And he said, no, I'm not following you. And I said, it's a book. It's a book. It's a book. Mm. And he said, well, okay, I'll, you know, I'll follow, I'll chase this with you. And if I wasn't a kindergarten teacher at this point in my life, I'd be a librarian. Like I, oh, wow. I, first of all, I'm an avid reader of anything. Mm -hmm. My husband says it's a disease I have. Like, <laughs> I, part of the luggage anywhere we go is, are my books. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I also love children's books and I always have. My mom instilled that love and read to us just I mean, I can just still see the books in my hand mm -hmm. like the, that we loved. And I have a huge library in my own classroom. And any, I mean, I, I read two or three books a day to my kids. And mm -hmm. some that, you know, we'll read over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Well, social emotional books are becoming more and more prevalent, but also more and more important. And instead of just taking the lyrics of the song and putting it over, you know, that's where we started. Right, right, right. Was... Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, you know what? You would think that that's the way you do it, but we barely kept mm. any of the song, the actual song lyrics. There's a couple mm. of my favorites, like sure. um, Pink Flamingos, you know, Flying in a Sky Full of Pigeons. Like, that is in there, and that's one of my favorite illustrations. But um, just the idea of owning comparison and owning yourself, and it is frightening. Mm. And even when we were going through my our wonderful editor that we got to work with having, you know, m meetings with him, FaceTime meetings. Mm -hmm. And he even said, I mean, totally different background. Yeah. You know, I'm a redheaded small town chick from Kentucky. Nathan is from, he's going to kill me wherever the Jayhawks are. Is that Indiana? Sunflower state? Is that Indiana? I don't know. Well, that's where I think he's from. <laughs> that's where I think he's from. Is the Jayhawks a hockey team? I think it's, Oh, this is so bad. I don't what know. What is it? What are the Jayhawks? The Jayhawks. I don't even know if I'm saying the right thing. <laughs> oh, no. Edit. Edit. He's going to totally hate me for that. I, he talks about it all the time. You would think. I clearly zone out when he talks That's about so sports. <laughs> but anyway, 
totally different upbringing. Mm-hmm. And so John, our editor, totally different upbringing, totally different everything. And he said, I, before we even got into the, the you know, editing past the first draft, he said, I see this as a book that I would read over and over to my kids every mm-hmm. night. And I think it's a message because I would want them to fall asleep. Now I'm, I don't know if John said this that time, but falling asleep with that message in your brain oh, yeah. and waking up and we, you know, I, oft, I often say, you know, I've faked brave for so long, mm-hmm. but it is, you have to be a brave person as a three-year-old, mm-hmm. as a 40-year-old. Mm-hmm. I had to be brave to say to Music Row, you know, like, I'm going to be a teacher now. Mm-hmm. It's It takes bravery, I think, sometimes to say, I don't agree with you and this is why. Right. But I'm going to listen to you. I think it's, yeah. I think you have to be brave to listen. Mm-hmm. And just that idea of my brave might be loud and, you know, I'm a lot to take in and I'm, I'm loud and I'm a lot, you know. But somebody else's brave might be just calm. And, you know, you have any group of kids you have, 25-year-olds, every personality is in that group. Mm-hmm. And I watched mm-hmm. them for the first two weeks, and I'm like, okay, that's this, this is mm-hmm. this outgoing, extrovert, introvert needs, you know, and I figured it all out, and then I mixed them up. Mm-hmm. Because I want them to celebrate not only everybody else, mm-hmm. which I think is what we focus on so much, but also celebrate who you are. Yeah. And... So the message of the book is, it's interesting, our illustrator, I mean, you can see, I love, I had very little, we had very little to do. I just, I dreamed it in my brain. So for those who might just be listening on the podcast platforms, I'm holding up the book. You're holding my baby. Definitely. (laughs) I'll I'll send you all the information and show notes of where where to get your hands on this. So dare to be me the book. So yes. Oh, I love it. So we, they just sent the page and it's really hard to write a book you know you would think it's oh it's easy to write a kid's book it's just as intricate as writing a song and of course we wrote Mm -hmm. in rhyme because that's the way we think Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. being a songwriter Mm -hmm. but um she the illustrator saw read it and then just kind of did some character mock-ups really fast had not seen me, did not know me, and the little redhead. Oh my gosh! Yeah, wow. That's the only cool. thing we, I think, the original one was she was a lot. She was like two or three. We were like, we wanted to be like five. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. But the, I mean, this character throughout the book, it mimics you know an extroverted child basically. But the message is, I mean, if you just read the book and didn't look at the pictures, it's it makes me cry every time I hear it mm. because I just think it's the the message that, gosh, if we had a generation of kids that followed that message and followed mm-hmm. that belief in themselves and in others, mm-hmm. isn't that a golden? Yeah. Right. So this is a great place to end. So we, so here's what's going to happen is at least at the time of filming, um, when this episode, you know, has just launched now with Casey. So we are going to do a book giveaway. Um, so someone, we will do a drawing. And so you can enter in on the landing page. It's in show notes. Um, enter in the, on the landing page. And then uh, in about a week, we will jump on Instagram Live and do just a really quick chat. And then we will just randomly draw the winner. So make sure you um, enter to win. And for a chance to win, and then also I'll also put in show notes um, all the places where you can get your hands on a copy if you do not get selected for the drawing. Yes. Um, so let's end with a question I ask all my guests, which is ultimately if it were all, if the, if the children's books and the children's music and even teaching, singing session, you know, demo sessions and writing songs, if all that was gone, ultimately how how would you want to be remembered? What is it that you'd want to leave behind? Wow, that's a good question. I think... Oh, I think at the end of the day, I would want people, if they heard my name or read my name or whatever, I'm thinking of my family more than anything, and my dearest friends, but just to smile. You know those people that... Like, if you were to say so-and-so, I'd be like, oh! That mm-hmm. that is the that feeling you can't put a word on, mm-hmm. whether it's like a big hug or it's a laugh. That is the feeling I would want people to have mm. about me. I mean, I don't have any 
yes, I've done some cool stuff. I don't have any like accolades or awards to like hang my hat on or anything. And, and I, you know, my husband and I've talked about it a lot. Like we don't have our own, we have our jobs. We don't have our own kids. And so of course I get to borrow 20 every year and they become <laughs> like sin the family. Yeah. But I think just joy, mm-hmm. joyful and, um, just an awe, just an awe of living life, mm-hmm. you know, finding the, the funny mm-hmm. in every moment, if it's, you know, the, the heartbreaking or the heartbroken or the heart, in, like whatever it is, mm-hmm. just to find that little sliver, sliver of joy and hope and, and, and laughter is mm-hmm. what I would hope. Like, if you think about me ever and I'm gone, put in three amigos <laughs> and toast a big Sonic Diet Line made to me and watch Chevy Chase and Steve Martin and Mark. Like that is the epitome. Like if I could, that is the way I want to live my life, which sounds ridiculous. No, it's, but all, it's beautiful. Just quirky. And to give, to leave people with that, a feeling of, I think yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. And you do that. I mean, you, it exudes out of you, whether you're in person or on your Instagram feed or your newsletter. I mean, when you write to your audience or to your people and your, and your, the people in your world, I mean, you, it is Casey jumping off the page. I mean, it is. Whether you like it or not, right? <laughs> I think most people like it. Oh, most thank like you. It. Thank, thank you for you. being my guest. Oh, thank you, friend. Yes, you can find all things Casey um, in show notes. Her website where you can find her kids' songs and music, where you can find her children's book, um, and where you can follow her on Instagram and her newsletter because she does send out some really great resources if you're a parent or a teacher um, of kindergartners. Um, and she is your go-to resource. So... Thank you so much. I want to meet you. (laughs) (laughs) See you next time.